what is real bhakti, an often discussed subject. My Shiksha Guru, Srila Bhakti Balaptirta Maharaj, he likes to speak in very simple words, which turn, sound like this, unalloyed, one-pointed devotion. <laughs> Pleasing Krishna with everything we do, without ne negotiation, without speculation, without calculation, without notion of superiority. Viktor Frankl said, the problem of modern man is not so much that he thinks that he himself has no value. Rather easily he concocts into the wrong direction of thinking that he is God himself. But he is very easily inclined towards casting away the meaning of life altogether and assessing the importance of life to be something like a futile effort of any permanent achievement since all is gone very soon <coughs> and for that purpose do nothing and become indifferent or do everything and get every possible pleasure out of it before time is over. Now either way of those interpretations are actually traumatic attitudes. Those people who are going around with this idea, I'm God, or life has no meeting, meaning, or anything like this, they're actually in a neurotic state and need some kind of treatment. And that appropriate treatment is called sadhu -sangha. This is the appropriate and maybe, no, not maybe, foremost and maybe only process of remedy to straighten out the misgivings coming from both karma and jnana and different levels of speculations. Now, speculation is a natural thing human beings do because they have a working mind which is always in full speed active producing different ideas and justifications so you could easily think that uh, the doubts are necessary speculation is necessary it's part of the human function of a, of a searching mind. Just like if you think that everything is good because everything belongs to God's creation, then if you go in the wrong way, that's also good because then you will find out sooner or later that this was the wrong way. So you still acquired some merit or some gain from doing the wrong thing. Like sometimes people ask me and you, What's the best thing to do? And I can only answer them, what you think is the best for you at this point, from your given consciousness, for your given goals, which you are focusing, I'm sorry to say that's the best, because most likely you will not go any other way anyway, because that's where your mind is set on. So, how to develop a higher qualification for 
defining what is the appropriate direction to take with our mind? Well, that you can achieve by prayer. Really, one of the key issues of all spiritual advice is pray. Pray, pray, pray. For what? For everything. Pray for saying thanks. Pray for uh, not forgetting to be thankful. Pray for becoming compassionate. Pray for understanding. Pray for love. Pray for dream. Pray for give, getting rid of anartas. Pray for... Just keep praying. Just pray and pray for pray and pray. So this is a, a process of praying. So Lanyam Lala Shamay is also praying, intensely eager praying. That is what you do when you're really after something. You really want to get something, then you have to pray. Because if you don't pray, if you don't have the praying attitude, you won't get it anyway. If you don't pray for it, it may come right in front of your nose and you won't recognize it. Because it's all by mercy. Everything you do, everything you get, every step you take is by mercy. You don't know whether a step you take is secure until you take it because maybe the ground is not going to support your weight. Maybe it gives away and you fall in a ditch. <coughs> you only know that after you stepped on it. Before it may look safe, it may not look safe, the eye may cheat you. So for the process of bhakti, praying for mercy, and getting rid of karma and jnana contamination. Srila Prabhupada Bhaktivedanta Swami, he used to say something very funny. He says, there is the third class rascal, he's called Karmi. He thinks he can solve everything with his working power. Hey, I'm powerful, I'm gonna manage things. The second class rascal, he's the jnani. He thinks, I can fix it all with my brain. I'll just figure it out. I just think about it. I juggle the words. I go forward and back. I do this and that, and I'm going to come out victorious. I don't need anybody's help. And the first class rascal, that is the yogi. He says, I am doing mystic process, yajna, I'm doing yoga, I'm doing asan, I'm doing pranayams, I'm doing special tapas. I'm gonna handle all this, I'm gonna tackle the material energy and overcome it and reach out with my yogic power to the supreme destination. He's the first class rascal. And who is not a rascal? One who helplessly admits I can't do it myself. I'm lost. I'm a little nobody. I have no prem, I have no bath, I have no bhakti, I have no nothing. I'm just a beggar at the door of the Vaishnavas that they may give me some remnants, a morsel of remnants of their food and maybe some instructions for seva that I may do some seva. That is what I can accomplish to understand that I can't accomplish anything. Everything is in the hands of the Supreme. And if I want to get the grace of the Supreme, I just have to learn how to cry for it. Gorgovinda Maharaj, my Guru Bhai, said, Srila Prabhupada opened a crying school. So 
so that we can learn how to cry. But without making a show of it, please. Crying for mercy, crying for sin. So today I'm crying at the lotus feet of Giriraj Govardhan, who has come to give the perfect utilization of the senses, the Govardhan, the destination of the senses coming into contact with the supreme Govinda. Gopala and my senses surrender to his sweet play, play with Radharani in Govardhan. That is what I'm praying for today. Staying at a certain distance to worship from that distance my revered preceptors who are actually qualified of understanding and distributing Govardhan consciousness. Very happy to be here with all of you in Mundir Mandir, Radha Mohan Mandir, with the assembled devotees from so many different countries. Many of you have come here the first time in your life. You must be mesmerized to see so much beauty. I mean, let's face it. This building alone, it's much more beautiful than the parliament building in the United States or the, the top buildings in England or Germany. First of all, because it has the sweet Vindavan touch to it, it's a Rajasthani architecture. But this is nothing. Architecture means absolutely nothing. On the Takojis, on the altar, he is the center of this place, Radha Mohanji. And he has always been. Every square inch in this building, in this compound is connected to him, is for him, is his mercy to receive us here and to celebrate Kobanam Puja. <clears throat> so you don't find such places, God-centered architecture, generally, in the Western world at least. I'm not comparing now with other religious buildings, not for that sake. I'm talking about the coziness, the home feeling. You can tell some, somebody, welcome home. Hey, you belong here. Maybe you're not going to live here for the whole life, but it's your home. You can be connected to Brindavan, to Radha Mohan, Radha Braja Mohan. You can be connected. You can serve them. You can send donations. You can make garments. You can make dresses. You can open another temple of the similar style in your place and create a place of ashraya, of shelter there. Plenty of things you can do for your Takoji, but always it has to be self. Krishna centered. Vindavan is a temple city and we are all at home in Vindavan even though we still have a lot of work to do because this is Seva to Vindavan to make Vindavan more beautiful. My Guruji Srila Prabhupada said we have to clean Vindavan, fix the old beautiful buildings and re-establish the glorious deity worship. He himself established the deity worship. From the worship in Krishna Balura Mandir, easily you could say a huge ignition was taking place which has made the deity worship in all of Vindavan like never before. When I came here 40 years ago, in some of these temples the deities had rags on their body old rags with no shine or sh nothing. 
just at least the deity still had a rag. No? In other places they don't make, now they make deities that Carver already puts the dress in there. Then you don't have to do anything anymore. <coughs> because the dress is in the marble. Something like that. And then they also carve the garlands in the marble, so you don't have to put a garland anymore. Or you just get a plastic garland, which you can change once every six months. So, this is not the Vendavan of Prabhupada. He gave us a Vendavan so loving, the living bhakti experience. You come to Vendavan, there's a spiritual experience. That is so wonderful.